Hello and welcome to the second installment of the world's most famous waves. So grab a cuppa and let's dive in. Where better to start than Malibu in California? Now Malibu was very much the place where surf culture was born. You know, in, in the 60s and 70s, surfing became this pastime of people who rebelled against society, a lot of drugs, free love, all that kind of thing. Malibu is very much the epicenter of that. I've never actually surfed Malibu. Um, I've driven past it a few times, and when I've been there, it's been just really small and like, unbelievably crowded to say how tiny and bad the waves were. But yeah, I know on its day, it gets really, really fun, even for shortboarders, you know, when you get those big south swells. But on any given day, it looks like like really fun, mellow, longboard wave. I know a lot of you watching this are from California, so you'll be able to tell me your first-hand accounts of it. Next up, we head to Rincon. Now, this is another wave that I'm yet to surf. However, it's very high on my list. I mean, like Malibu, I'm sure it's insanely crowded, basically like everywhere in California, <laughs> but it just looks like one of those waves that peels so beautifully, you know, in that sort of the cove section. Nicknamed the queen of the coast in California, and that's for good reason, you know, out of the whole entire Californian coastline where there are some amazing waves, Rincon is probably the most perfect. Obviously it doesn't get good very, very often, but when it does break on those northern hemisphere winter swells, it just looks like the most amazing wave. I'd, I'd love to surf it. Next up, we head to Australia, to Margaret River. Now, main break gets a pretty bad rap as being a pretty mushy, shitty wave. And to be honest, it's not my favorite wave in the world. When I've spent time in Margaret River, haven't surfed it that often, just sort of when I've needed to surf it. And while it looks amazing and picturesque from the car park, you know, you've got these perfect, like solid A-frames under that stiff offshore wind. It's a really hard wave to surf, especially to surf it how you see the CT guys and girls surf it, you know, they're going right and attacking that end section which basically ends on dry reef. Um, it's really shallow in there, so on normal days a lot of people are surfing the left, which is fatter and it ends in deeper water. Um, but that said, it's still just this big sort of open ocean, like rolling sort of wave. It's more or less impossible to surf without getting cleaned up out there. And it always comes with a bit of wind, cold and like wild, feels like you're really far out to sea out there, which you kind of are. So yeah, it's definitely not my favorite wave and a hard wave to rip unless you love those kind of open ocean sort of waves. Next, jumping across the ditch to New Zealand and Manu Bay. Now Manu Bay is, I guess, the most famous wave in New Zealand. It's the first of the Raglan Point. Um, it's an amazing wave, a beautiful wave on its day. It can have barrel sections and be quite slabby off takeoff, but on a normal day, it's just a fun left-hand wall. Um, it's good for advanced surfers. You get a lot of intermediates out there and sort of almost beginners that perhaps shouldn't be out there. Not that anybody has the right to tell anybody they can't surf a certain spot, but then I guess you do have the safety aspect to it as well. And yeah, Manu Bay, although it's a really, really fun user-friendly wave like to rip into, it is definitely one of those places where you get burned a lot. Yeah, it's a sick wave and I love surfing out there, but it's definitely attracts that kind of lower intermediate crowd, which makes it pretty difficult for everyone else surfing. And that said, there's plenty of other ways you can surf. Next up, we head to the Maldives and to Cokes. Now, Cokes is one of the few waves in the Maldives that's not privatized. So the common misconception about the islands is that all the waves are private and owned by resorts. If you haven't already, check out my video breaking down surf spot privatization. It's a really interesting dive into that weird world of resorts owning surf spots. So yeah, I'll leave the link up there if you want to check that out and down in the description. Um, but yeah, Cokes itself is a really, really fun wave. It's not like crazy powerful, so it's quite mellow and forgiving as far as a reef pass goes, while still being shallow and still having that nice, beautiful trockle shape, you know? So it's a wave that offers barrel sections and just fun sections for turns in the most beautiful water you've ever seen. Uh, but that said, because it is on the island of Telusadu and it's one of the few places that you can stay on that island and just surf off your own accord, it does get crowded. So most days we've got 30, 40 people battling for waves, which, yeah, obviously isn't that fun. The most notorious wave in, in the Maldives, so everyone wants a slice of it. So what can you expect? 
Next up we've got Lancer's Right, and Lancer's Right is obviously an amazing way. We've all seen the videos of like Nate Florence and whoever getting those crazy double up roll-ins. I mean it's definitely not like that all the time, like on a normal day it's a bit more of a sort of high performance right-hander. Really fun, really fast, quite shallow and I found it quite sectiony and quite difficult to surf personally. It definitely wasn't my favourite wave. Uh, that said, I didn't surf it on the best swells or the best days, it was just sort of small. And yeah, Lancer's right as well. It's got a horrible end section called the Surgeon's Table. So if you're surfing the wave to the end, it just runs onto this like horrible patch of dry reef. And the Surgeon's Table is a very good description of, of what it is. Luckily I didn't land on it, but I was surfing so hesitantly I always managed to avoid it. Well, it's got a really interesting history of how it's discovered. I made a full video about that as well. If you want to check that out up there, Lance Knight, the guy who discovered it and eventually met up with the guys on the Indies Trader. They were the first guys who surfed the wave, um, which would have been an unbelievable find back in the day. Today, it's really famous, so it is really crowded. On the best days, you've got multiple boats sat there in the channel all day. You've got a few different land camps in the vicinity, so yeah, you, it is crowded. And being one of the most famous waves in the world, like it's that's just kind of how it is. Now sticking in Indonesia, heading back to Bali, we've got Karama, a really, really sick wave. High performance, fast, fun, rippable, can have tube sections on the right day, just sick walls for turns. You've got commune right there on the sand, so you can just sit in the pool there, sit bintangs, watch waves. Cool little beach, I really like Karamas. Haven't spent that much time there, but surfed it good a few times. Um, and surfed it bad quite a few times as well. But it's still like a really fun wave no matter what. It is a fast, like, powerful wave and it is quite shallow. It is still relatively friendly in terms of Indonesian like reef break type waves. So it does get crowded. Yeah, and you get like good locals and stuff and yeah, a lot of rippers out there who are not gonna let you get waves. Next we've got Chopu. Now we're about to have the Olympics at Chopu which is going to be a really really interesting watch. I can't wait to see how that goes down, especially if the swell gets big. Um, I've never surfed Chopu but I've seen enough footage of it and read enough about it to guess what it would be like. <laughs> Obviously very very shallow, just sort of draws off the reef like really drastically, you know, sucking all that water off the reef and throwing over itself especially when you get those like West Bowl ones. Uh, just looks like an insane wave, not one that's high up on my list and definitely not the most confident person like sliding under the lip on like heavy left reef passes. Um, but yeah, let me know if you surfed it. I'd love to, to hear what it's actually like from a first hand perspective. Uh, next we head to Trestles and Trestles alongside Snapper is one of the most crowded waves on the planet. That said, it's also one of the most perfect, you know, I've never surfed a wave that almost like makes you surf good. Because the wave's so soft and so perfectly shaped, I feel like you can almost like bog rail and it'll just like push you back into the wave or it's like really forgiving and just so rippable. You've got like perfect rights, like long open face right. I found the rights to give you like more like open face for like calves and whereas the left was a bit steeper and shorter for like backhand hits. Um, I think it changes a little bit depending on the swell direction and I've only surfed it a few times. It was like four to six foot when I surfed it so it was firing. Uh, but it was so crowded as well, like just insane. I was paddling out in the dark, like pitch black dark, too dark to even surf. And most mornings there was already like 10 people out there before. I, I mean, I don't know how early you have to be to, you know, get a wave to yourself out there. I don't think it's even possible. And I was just walking down there as well. And then like everyone's driving past me on electric bikes and like getting there before me. <laughs> the level of surfing's so high, it's really hard to get a wave. And because the wave is so perfect and so forgiving, like people don't fall off that much. It's not like snapper where it's like section and there's like tube sections where people fall and you can sort of tee off that. Yeah, you're just waiting for people to fall off and because the level of surfing is so high, they just don't. So you're just sitting out there like not catching a wave. So it's really, really competitive. But if you do get one, it's a really, really fun wave, amazing wave. But it's one of them where I didn't really ever enjoy any of my surfs out there because it was such a battle and so competitive. 
Um, so sticking in Hawaii, another legendary wave is Waimea. Now Waimea is one of those like mystical waves, you know, it's like the first established big wave spot in the world. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I've surfed Waimea because I, I basically haven't, but I have paddled out there. So when I was in Hawaii like years ago, there was a big swell like the day before where Waimea was like properly like 20 foot and we just sort of watched from the rocks, like kind of too scared to surf. But then the next day it like dropped off quite quickly and kind of dropped to sort of 10 to 12 foot. So me and a few friends went out to surf it and I borrowed like an 8 off somebody which is just so alien to me and basically just sat in the channel and watched the waves. I didn't even catch a wave. Like it was only like 10 foot like Hawaiian. It wasn't that big in the scheme of things but I was just so scared just watching these like big vertical walls come in and it's got that kind of eerie aura about it as well with like the church in the background and when you're out there like you're like shit I'm at, I'm at Waimea like this is mental um, but a couple of my friends got some fun waves so it was cool to kind of watch them from the channel and then anytime a set came I just like sprint paddled into the channel and like kind of embarrassing really I kind of wish that I caught a wave whilst I had that opportunity and last but not least we've got Huntington Beach in California now I haven't surfed Huntington but like Chobra I've watched enough footage of it to get a pretty good idea of what it's like Every time I watch the US Open, it just seems to be like an out the back close out that goes fat and then reforms onto the shore break and closes out again there. But that said, it looks like a really fun wave. I was saying to my friend the other day, I'm a huge fan of like shit fun waves where the waves are really mushy, there's no consequence, but there's still enough power to sort of rip into it. And um, I really like waves like that. Um, and when I see like all the pros and like Brett Simpson and like those guys surfing it, it always looks like the funnest wave. But yeah, I'm sure some of you watching it surf it regularly and could probably tell me otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, let me know if you do. Um, so yeah, that concludes episode two of the world's most famous waves. Let me know of your experience of surfing any of these waves. I'd love to hear your account. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. But for now, it's goodbye from me and I'll catch you in the next step.